Now, there is one other aspect, I guess, that could solve A, a lot of issues, B, make it more cost effective and solve problems, and that is actually using it as a true space economy. Because this is something you hinted at at the very beginning of the economics section, that space economics is not actually about space economics in space the way we think. It's a very colonial economy yeah. in the sense that everything is launched from the Earth and then the, the proceeds go back to Earth. Yeah. It's like some European colonies yeah. in the 19th century. The Imperial would come in, loot everything, and then ship it back home again without benefiting anyone locally. Nothing stays in space to be used in space, but what we're talking about here is actually changing that paradigm. Yes, so for example, let's say you want to mine a bunch of asteroids. Why not build your mining plant in space? Yes. Um, with the materials that are right there. That way you don't have to ship everything there, and you don't have to ship everything back. Um, and then I guess you can build and sort of the equipment in space. You can build that equipment for other uses in space as well, right? That's right. So I mean, this was back in the 70s, there were all these ideas about building giant solar stations in space. You could build habitats, you can build mining things, you can build your rockets to go to Mars in space. Which means you're not- Using materials in space. That's right. Um, and so this, is much further future, but this is the idea of a real space economy where things are manufactured in space to be used in space. And so I guess that, yeah, as you said, that's that longer term vision of where you could potentially go is using it as a true space economy. And I guess we should say the reverse. You're really not going to get a true space economy if you're not generating money some degree from space itself. Otherwise, that's right. it's colonialism. But you sense. could easily imagine you know, a thousand years from now, yep. um, there are so many more raw materials in space that the economy of space could be much bigger than the economy of the Earth. Mm. I mean, if you wanted to build something, the obvious place to do it is the asteroid belt because you've got the, the free energy and the free raw materials as opposed to doing it on space where all these things are hard and expensive. So this is kind of a, not, a, not even a long-term vision. This is if the future is going to evolve 100,000 tens of thousands of years. I think probably maybe could we well be closer than that. I mean, the, the reason is you'd need to get enough things happening in space that it starts being worthwhile. That's right. Like if there's a colony on Mars, people are shuttling back and forwards, it might be cheaper to build the spacecraft in the asteroid belt than to build them on Earth and launch them every time. Okay. And so how you get enough things happening in space, if there's lots of space tourism and people are building lots of space hotels, yeah. then maybe it starts becoming cost effective to build them in space rather than ship them all up from the Earth's surface. So it's kind of reliant on a few other things happening as well. So it's probably like setting up any colony. Yeah. There has to be some, something that makes the money to begin with. And once there's enough money being made, in the case of Australia, it'd be the, the sheep or the gold rush mm. that's made the money, but that meant the people moved there, which then means you've got a local economy. Yep. Okay. People cutting each other's hair and making each other's coffee and so on. Okay. So this is the long term. It may or may not happen. It's going to need something to get space very busy to begin with. Yep. Um, in the near term, it's all going to be an Earth-centered space economy, but it could happen in the long run. Okay. So I'd say space mining, it's a lot of money, a lot of materials out there, um, but getting it to actually be practical is going to be a bit of a struggle.